The optical lenses used in quality cameras and binoculars are usually given a thin, non-reflective coating. This coating improves the transmission of light through a lens, which in turn improves image quality. How do such coatings work? This will become clear as we explore the phenomena of interference and diffraction. When two waves pass through the same region of space and time, they pass through each other unaltered. When the two waves are occupying the same region, they superpose into a single waveform that is the sum of the two waves. This phenomenon is known as interference. The amplitude of the combined waveform is greater than that of either wave when constructive interference occurs. The amplitude of the combined waveform is less than that of either wave when destructive interference occurs. Assuming two light waves have the same wavelength, when does the greatest amount of destructive interference occur? Correct. When the two waves are one half wavelength out of phase, the crests and troughs overlap, producing the greatest amount of destructive interference. Now consider circular waves emanating from two coherent point sources. An interference pattern consisting of dark and bright fringes develops. The bright fringes represent areas of constructive interference and occur an integral number of wavelengths from the sources. The dark fringes represent areas of destructive interference and are located at odd number of half wavelengths from the sources. When waves encounter an object, they bend around the edge of the object into the region directly behind the object. This phenomenon is known as diffraction. Only if the object is larger than the wavelength of the wave will a significant shadow region form behind the object. Diffraction also occurs when waves encounter an opening. The waves bend around the edge of the opening. For what relative opening size does the greatest amount of diffraction occur? Correct. Greater diffraction occurs when the opening is less than the wavelength of the wave. And less diffraction occurs when the opening is greater than the wavelength of the wave. Because the wavelengths of visible light are relatively short, it is difficult to make direct observations of light wave interference phenomena. It is also difficult to produce light from two coherent sources. During the early 19th century, Thomas Young solved these problems by using a single light source to illuminate two narrow, closely spaced slits. Light emerging from the two slits served as two coherent sources. When he passed light through the slits and projected it onto a screen, Young observed that a series of bright fringes appeared, rather than the two lines that some scientists thought would appear if light consisted of a simple stream of particles. Light waves are diffracted by the slits, and this causes the waves to spread out and interfere with one another resulting in a pattern consisting of a bright central fringe flanked by a series of symmetrical light and dark fringes. Young's experiment proved the wave nature of light because interference and diffraction are phenomena that only occur with waves. Now, let's quantify some of the things we have been discussing. Let the distance to the screen be L and the distance of a bright fringe at point A to the central fringe be x sub m. The angle between A and a normal line between the slits is theta. The path length of the light from the two slits differs by an amount given by the product of the slit separation d and the sine of the angle theta. Remember that for constructive interference, the path difference between two waves must be an integral number of wavelengths. 
For what condition does a dark fringe representing destructive interference appear on the screen? Correct. A dark fringe occurs when the path difference is an odd number of half wavelengths. The wavelengths of the individual colors of visible light can be estimated from this experiment. If the angle theta is very small, then the wavelength of a monochromatic source can be estimated by measuring the distance from the central maximum to a bright fringe. Given the experimental setup shown, what is the color of a monochromatic light source if the distance to the second order bright fringe is 27 millimeters? Incorrect. Try again. Correct. The calculated wavelength corresponds to the color red. If we perform this experiment with only one slit, we again obtain an interference pattern of light and dark fringes, though in this case, the bright central fringe is much wider. Using a derivation similar to that for the double slit experiment, the condition for the appearance of dark side fringes can be determined to be a function of the product of the slit width W and the sine of the angle theta. The distances from the dark fringes to the central maximum can be estimated from the slit width and the distance to the screen. For a given wavelength, as the slit width decreases, the fringes become wider and the distance between them increases. The width of the central maximum is twice the width of the side fringes. What would the interference pattern be if we performed the experiment using many slits instead of one or two? Incorrect. Try again. Correct. The number of fringe patterns would increase and the bright fringes become sharper. A device to diffract light waves that consists of thousands of slits per centimeter is known as a diffraction grating. The conditions required a diffraction grating to produce bright fringes are the same as for the double slit setup. Because of the sharp patterns produced by diffraction gratings, they are used in research spectrometers for producing precise wavelengths of light. The non-reflective coatings on lenses of binoculars and cameras make use of the phenomenon known as thin film interference. A glass lens is coated with a thin layer of a material with an index of refraction intermediate between those of air and glass. Light traveling through one medium can be reflected at the interface with a second medium. If the second medium has a greater index of refraction than the first, the reflected light is 180 degrees out of phase with the incident light. As a result, light reflected at both the air and coating interface and the coating and lens interface is reflected with a 180 degree phase shift. If the coating thickness is equal to a quarter wavelength of the reflected light, then the path difference between the second reflected light ray and the first reflected light ray is one half wavelength and destructive interference occurs. The net result is that incident light of that wavelength is only transmitted, not reflected. A quarter wavelength of yellow-green light is chosen for the coating thickness because the human eye is most sensitive to that wavelength of light. Isaac Newton described a thin film interference pattern he observed in lenses even though he did not know his cause. When a curved lens is placed on a flat glass plate, the wedge of air that is trapped between the two produces an interference pattern consisting of concentric bright and dark circular fringes. This phenomenon, now known as Newton's rings, can also be observed when a thin layer of air is trapped between two microscope slides.